Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 137 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we have a guest on the episode. It's Danielle Lampert from Snout School. Pretty excited to talk with her about branding, her relaunch that she's been working on, and just a a bunch of really solid marketing and branding um, things that we're talking about today in the episode. It's great. So if you have any kind of branding questions um, or you've been wondering how to promote your brand, either personally or for your veterinary practice, this is going to be a fantastic episode for you. Before we begin, I'd like to mention a few things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to be uh, subscribed in iTunes or in Google Play. Uh, That way you get updated as soon as the podcast gets launched each week. I'd also like to mention this episode is being sponsored by usedvetequipment.com. Check out the website usedvetequipment.com. It's the website by Brad Haven. He's the owner of the company. It's been on the internet for over five years now. Almost six, I think, um, which is great. And what usedvetequipment.com does is they bring the buyer and the sellers together. So do you have any used equipment that's in your storage room that you're looking to sell? Are you looking to save money by buying used? And they have everything from cages and kennels, x-rays, ultrasounds, surgery equipment, laser equipment, lab equipment from IDEX or Baxis. They got tables, tubs, sinks, and tons of miscellaneous items. So if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure to check out usedvetequipment.com. It's kind of like eBay for vets, uh, and it works to sell your used equipment today. You can check out testimonials and also see what's for sale there. So head on over to usedvetequipment.com. Say hi to Brad for me. Let him know you heard about it on the podcast. I'd also like to um, ask if you enjoy the podcast and you like the content that's coming out, be sure to send me a message. Um, If you have any questions, you need help with anything, Just send me a question on my Facebook page there if you'd like any topics covered. Um, There's a bunch of really cool new topics that are going to be coming out here in the next few weeks. So be sure you're subscribed. And if you enjoy the podcast, please leave me an honest review in iTunes. I would really, really appreciate it. All right. So let's get into today's episode, episode 137. We have Danielle Lampert on. I think this is her fourth time on the podcast. It's been a little while since she's been on. But she's been doing some really, really cool branding stuff. Uh, She's been working on very cool projects, which she details here. I'm a huge fan of her branding work and uh, just the content that she produces in general. So I think that there's a bunch of really good lessons here. If you have any questions, again, don't forget forget or hesitate to reach out on Facebook. That's the best place to reach me. All right, so without further ado, here is the episode with Danielle Lambert. So today we were t- going to talk about your Snout School relaunch, and you just relaunched it. So can you kind of give us a rundown of the the pivot that you've made yeah. as far as like choosing kind of your target and, and how you're going to be doing things differently on Snout School, which I think is really cool. And we're going to jump into that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we just relaunched a little over a week ago. So it's been a little bit of a whirlwind, especially because I decided to launch a website and then go on vacation like two days later. Do not recommend. Um, But the timing just had to work out that way. Um, But yeah, we're we're really pivoting. I mean, I have spent the last, you know, nearly close closing in on five years, um, just teaching social media to veterinary hospitals. And it's something that I love doing. But I think that there is a need for so much more education in the marketing and branding space for veterinary professionals. And I also think careers for veterinary professionals are changing from just traditional practice ownership. Um, I, I really see an opportunity for people to kind of have more personal brands and startups and all sorts of different career paths within this space. I think that it's super important for people to kind of define their own path. I mean, I came from being a practice manager and now I have, you know, this whole internet business instead. And there was a time where I thought that kind of meant that I wasn't part of the veterinary world anymore, but I, 
you know, because I wasn't going to a veterinary hospital every day. And I know a lot of people in different um, parts of veterinary medicine struggle with that same feeling. So what I'm really trying to do with Snout School is help people to define success on their own terms within veterinary medicine. Um, And I know that's like a super broad statement, but really what it comes down to is I have skills in marketing and branding from building out the Dr. Andy Rourke brand, from building out the Uncharted Veterinary Conference brand um, that I really just want to take and transfer to other people in veterinary medicine who might want to you know, forge their own kind of path in this space. So that's kind of the big pivot that we're taking where it's not just about um, education for veterinary hospitals. It is something where it can be for veterinary businesses and brands, uh, meaning, you know, personal brands, things like that. I think that's the big pivot that's really happening here, but it's still going to definitely be a resource for all your marketing needs. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense to me because you are amazing at branding as well as all of the other marketing stuff and i think branding is a difficult it's definitely different um like than just direct response marketing in general yeah. so yeah. that is super cool um and one thing that i really liked about your relaunch that you did and i think that um like there was some really good lessons in watching how you were working in in doing it and things um Maybe you can kind of share what some of your biggest takeaways were from relaunching it. But I I think what I liked best was that um, you were able to promote like a long time before, which was really good. I think a lot of people generally they they do all kind of their work in secret and then Mm -hmm. they just like show up and they're like, I did something and then nobody cares about it because you haven't been promoting it. (laughs) I I thought that was super smart. Um, And then also the whole snout squad creation and also like being very vocal about what you're caring about and i'm sure well i'm not sure but i know that just with myself i like to try and be like kind of not too confrontational i don't like to be like i always (laughs) say i always say to veterinary practices like you should pick your ideal client and just cater to those people yeah in reality like I try to cater to everybody, honestly. Yeah. And yeah. like, it's super scary to put yourself out there and say, this is what I'm going to be about. And like, here's what, my direction. Cause right. like, you know, that's like super scary. I'm sure you were probably nervous. I don't know for sure, but like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I was like, how, how, if, if I was going to say something that was like definitive, I'd be like, Oh, how, how are people going to react? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a lot to unpack there. Right. So I definitely did build up this relaunch for, you know, a couple months prior to it happening. A big part of that is I took on my role as vice president of business development at Whisker Cloud, um, custom veterinary websites, as you know, um, you've had Adam on. Um, but I, I was taking on that role and Whisker Cloud was going to help me with the uh, redesign of the website and the amazing graphic designer Ali over there was going to help with our new logo, which just became my dog because he rules everything in my life. Um, (laughs) I'm like, great, this will just be an Archer logo. Um, But they were working on that stuff behind the scenes, right? And I saw this as an opportunity to both kind of open up the conversation about what I was doing. I left the Dr. Andy Wark brand, I left the Uncharted brand, and I was focusing on my own stuff. So I wanted to kind of have that conversation, talk about Whisker Cloud, and then start kind of putting out my message. Um, You know, the great thing about having your own personal brand and building that out is that you always have that audience to fall back on. And that's why I see such huge value in it. I always have my email list. I always have my social media followers. I always have the connections I've made through networking. And so I wanted to kind of put my message out to them and let people know, hey, you know, it is definitely time to be, you know, be yourself and be more transparent and kind of own your innate skills and qualities that make you awesome and talk more about that on, you know, um, you know, on a more public platform. Like you, you know, I think of my amazing friend, Dr. Jessica Vogel saying, who is a USA Today bestselling author. And she felt like she was less than, other veterinarians because she's not practicing anymore, but she always is a veterinarian. So I wanted to kind of put out these 
this message that really clearly showed people, you know, hey, um, this is these are the struggles I've had, but this is who I am and this is what I want to do. And if you resonate with this message, you know, join join in with me. Um, so I wanted to kind of share my personal story because that was, I thought a way to connect with people a little bit more, frankly, I mean, when you're trying to build any sort of connection online, I think being authentic is important. And increasingly, as we're dealing with millennials, millennials really value transparency. I'm a millennial. I like transparency. So there's lessons to be learned here, either as a personal brand, like, I don't think it makes sense to, you know, pretend you are something you aren't if you're not you know, a practice manager in a hospital every single day anymore. Don't pretend that you are and go out and consult and pretend that that's what you do. I don't think that makes sense. Um, but the same thing with, you know, as a veterinary hospital, you know, if you, you know, maybe aren't the prettiest veterinary hospital on earth, like you got to still kind of show off who you are and show the behind the scenes, um, no matter, you know, what you're working with. So there's a lot of lessons to learn there, whether you are consulting or running a veterinary business, I think. Um, so that was kind of why it was important to me to kind of have this whole build up, right. To build that anticipation. I always am just like such a hype man anyway. Like I had to, it was in me, uh, to build up like <laughs> anticipation for this. Um, so that really is why I did it. Um, and I can kind of dive a little deeper into the snout squad and everything that that, you know, the role that that plays, that's like a whole nother conversation. Totally. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I brought in, you know, I just, I've really found throughout my career that there are so many, you know, so many women, especially I find that are doing amazing things that don't necessarily like own it or get credit for it. Okay. They might kind of be behind the scenes. Um, you know, you think about people like, you know, Dr. Vogel and I were kind of always behind the scenes on the Dr. Andy work brand. Um, and that's the role we chose and that's totally fine, but it, is something where, you know, you might be like, Hey, I kind of want to be out front, you know, like that, that's not the role I want. Um, or you have amazing people that, you know, um, that kind of have all different kinds of skill sets, um, and different platforms, but maybe don't get again, the recognition that I think that they deserve. So I know all these amazing women and I wanted to bring them in and have a diverse group of women that could be seen as leaders in this space. And I wanted women who were at different points in their career and that were doing different things. So we have everything from a, you know, board certified veterinary oncologist, like, um, you know, Dr. Sue Ettinger that does Dr. Sue cancer vet. Um, and we have a, um, everything from something like her to somebody that, you know, like Tracy Dowdy and Debbie Boone, who are amazing CVPMs with tons of experience. We also have vet students. We have the entire uh, VBMA board right now is involved um, and vet students that have big social media presences and are kind of doing different things as like a personal brand as vet students. And then we have women who are awesome social media managers uh, for clinics that maybe may or may not really get the credit they deserve for being amazing social media managers. So we have women from these diverse backgrounds that are at different points in their career and have different things that they can share. And they are like the official squad. We're going to share their stories and they are going to offer up their skills, you know, on webinars and blogs and things like that so that people can learn from them. Um, but it also is something where, you know, anybody that kind of resonates with this message that's trying to kind of define success on their own terms can, um, you know, still be part of the snout squad and be involved in sharing our message. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm doing that just because it was, a, I didn't want it to just be about me, right? Like I named snout school in a very purposeful way when I started it so that I would it wouldn't just ever be about me if I wanted to expand. And so now it's kind of that exciting opportunity to seize the day and bring 30 amazing women on board with me. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Totally. I think that it, there's, there's a lot of cool things about that. So um, is, is snout school open to like more people or is it just right now those initial 30 so the snout squad right now is just those 30 women. We're going to probably 
this is new. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how this kind of ends up going, but think of that snout squad as like, kind of, we're like this like little secret mastermind where we have a Slack channel and we talk amongst each other and we're mentoring each other and helping build each other's brands. And so that's kind of like a little, um, you know, a, a little mastermind aspect of it, but we want to take those skills and share them more publicly, what we're learning from each other and what we're learning as we, you know, um, go through our careers, we want to share that with other people. So a hundred percent, anybody can be part of the snout squad. We have at snoutschoolcom slash start. We have the snout squad starter kit, which is a, uh, kind of a really cool little package of all different things. There's stuff from Dr. Jessica Vogel saying about how to kind of create your story. Um, there's, I, I made a playlist of some, uh, I always need my music to kind of get me going when I'm working on stuff. So there's like a, a fun Spotify playlist in there to amp you up. There is our snout school code from Dr. Cindy Courtney, who does the jerk researcher. Um, and our code is really kind of, you know, how we treat each other and what we believe in. So anybody that kind of, you know, is resonating with this message could go get that kit. We're going to be sending out emails that detail the stories of these women. We're going to let you know when we have webinars on different topics. Um, so anybody can be involved in the squad. It's just, we're having that specific official squad, um, of 30 women because we can kind of share their stories and really focus on them, um, for an indeterminate amount of time. I'm kind of where it's up in the air right now. Exactly how this is going totally. to work. Uh, we're seeing it. We're playing it by ear. That's kind of my style. That's, that's a good style though. Cause it gives you flexibility yeah. to change as yeah. things work and stuff. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Absolutely. So, um, let's, let's talk about, uh, branding in general. Cause I think sure. that like, um, you, you have so much experience and, um, skills in this and, mm. um, I'm seeing a lot of practices take branding kind of they're they're like it's really interesting. I mean, you you've been doing this for 5 years, which is like 200 years <laughs> of digital marketing. It's all years. <laughs> exactly. Well, cuz it's it's just amazing to see everybody come around and you know, people commenting in your group. Yeah. I mean, just like the level of involvement that people have in digital marketing and branding and brand building. And so I, th I think that's, that's really cool. And it's probably like a direct result of the work that you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Seeping in finally. Yeah. Finally, it took you know, five <laughs> years, but finally yep. it's starting to come around. Um, exactly. <laughs> so th that is a question that I get a lot is, um, you know, like what, what should I focus on with branding? And I, I do see a lot of people asking about personal branding, which <clears throat> probably isn't my, my strength at all. So can you kind of give us when, when somebody asks you, what, what should I focus on with my hospital brand first? And then my personal brand second, kind of what yeah. are your best practices and, and things in general? Um, some key takeaways is I think first and foremost, it's so important to realize that branding isn't just a logo. Um, it goes into your whole story and the experience that people have when they come in to your practice. So when we're talking about a veterinary hospital, I'm talking about something where you are creating a very consistent and defined message throughout the entire interaction that somebody has with you. Um, so I love, um, you know, with, with, you know, with a veterinary hospital, I love to really kind of think about, you know, we were talking about choosing your ideal client and focusing on that ideal client. I think if you think about that ideal client and the experience that they want, and then think about your story as a practice and who you are and kind of put those two things together, you can start to kind of figure out what your brand is going to be, right? So I think that's kind of an important place to start. Um, Within that starter kit for the Snout Squad, um, Dr. Vogelsang has put in her like little story vet template of how you can kind of define your story. So defining your story is kind of that important kind of initial step once you know who you're trying to kind of attract. Um, and I think that that's, you know, when we talk about storytelling, I think it's just something that is kind of the new version of having a mission statement. We need to go beyond just like, we love animals. We take care of them. <laughs> like, We're open. Come to our hospital. Yay. Yeah. Because we have to get a little bit more 
concise with that, um, especially attracting millennial clients. In addition to them liking transparency, they really do like a story, right? You know, they, I think of, you know, on Portlandia where they have the whole joke about like the free range chicken and his name and where he came from and all of that, like all that hipster nonsense. But there's something to that. Um, people want to kind of know that story. So define who you are as a practice and what your story is, what your culture is, what your values are. And that is really I think more important to the branding than anything else from there. I think we need to kind of start focusing on, okay, how do we kind of consistently communicate this and how do we visually communicate this? And, you know, so if you might be, let's say, you know, you are a, I'm thinking of one of my favorite practices for consistency. Um, and I, I, so they're a practice that is in, uh, Sydney, Australia, and they are like very modern and they're trying to kind of attract, you know, young people to their hospital, high end kind of area. So they kind of are going to cultivate this look that is going to be more expensive and clean and high end and modern. Right. And that might not be your practice. But if that is your practice, it's going to make sense to have a brand, um, you know, they're called, <clears throat> they're called my vet animal hospital, they're at my vet animal hospital on Instagram. But when you look at their Instagram, you see pictures that are all bright and consistent, you see the same color blue, everything looks the same. And now I can imagine, um, I would love to go on a field trip and visit them, I haven't been in their practice. But I can imagine that when I go into their practice, I have the same exact kind of experience because they've done a great job of not only using, you know, this look and feel on their social media feeds, but they've actually brought in elements of interior design to brand that in the hospital so that everything looks the same. So if I find them as a potential client on Instagram and I see this bright, young, vibrant, expensive looking practice, I start to really kind of cultivate the story in my mind. And then if I go in there and actually bring my pet, I'm going to most likely have a similar experience. So that's kind of what I want people to think about when they think about branding. Um, and I, I think hospitals need to take this a little bit more seriously, uh, just because especially, you know, small family owned practices, um, you know, like my dad's, it's, it's, they're not always, you know, the norm anymore. We're having a lot more corporate uh, practices come in. So if you want to stand out, you need to level up. Um, it, it is so important, I think, to make your branding look more professional and special um, just because people are going to have that kind of expectation. You know, if I go, you know, to my spa, it's all branded the same everywhere and it looks expensive. You know, I, I think that people are starting to have these expectations and it's not only high end clients. Um, there's practices that do a really great job of this that are in all sorts of income brackets and all sorts of areas, but just having something defined that clarifies who you are is super, super important as a practice. Um, I could ramble on forever. I'll spare you. I obviously like, I feel very passionate about this, but I'm like, I want your Instagram feed to look like the experience that I'm going to get. It just makes people feel comfortable. They know what they're going to expect. And I think that's why it's important. It's not just about having pretty things like, yes, you can get a whisker cloud website. It comes with a logo and Ali will design you something pretty, but it's about having that same experience online, bringing it offline and, and having that consistency. Totally. That, yeah, okay. that makes total sense. But yeah. I, you know, um, I think that that is, that is a really good point. Uh, just the whole experience that, that somebody has across all of your social properties and your also website is if it's consistent, they're going to know that they're in the right place immediately yeah. and they don't have to kind of figure out where they are and if they're in the right place and, and all that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I think like psychologically it kind of builds trust, right? Like we've always talked about being transparent on social media, right? Because it can get like, and kind of help people get to know, like, and trust you. And I think that the more you kind of have that consistent and transparent, you know, um, message all around, it can kind of help build people's confidence in you. It's a messed up thing to think about, but you're like, okay, this, this really, that, that really is a way where people can kind of get to feel like they know you and they know what to expect. Totally. That, that makes a bunch of sense. I think that's really cool that you are working with Whisker Cloud now. Um, yeah. And I think that's a really, really good fit in general. So if, if somebody 
comes to you and says, like, hey, I have a old website, which is pretty common. Or <laughs> um, There's some scary websites out there. I've seen a lot. <laughs> I saw a bad one this week. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> that's bad yep, news. Yep. So um, if somebody, let's say they, they wanted to get started um, doing a rebrand of their hospital in general, kind of what is the checklist or process that you go through with them? Obviously, yeah. if somebody wants to, to contact you for, for this, they should. Um, but if they're thinking about it, what kind of things should they think about, like a hierarchy of, of needs, in your opinion? Um, yeah, so I think, again, like everything online, it comes back to your website. And the experience that you are giving on your website kind of sets a tone for the experience people are going to have when they come into your practice. So if it's clunky and awkward and things aren't working, um, that's kind of setting a negative tone right off the bat. So I think it's so important to have a beautiful website that people can actually do business with you on. Um, so first and foremost, I think, you know, when you're redoing all of this and focusing on, you know, a big rebrand, definitely, like we were saying, kind of figuring out what your story is as a practice and figuring out kind of the key messaging that you want to convey on that website. Um, from there, figuring out how you can not only convey it, you know, um, in words by writing out, you know, the copy for the website, but also figuring out how you can convey it in images, right? Like I was saying, that practice that's like very modern and young, they have really nice looking photography. And I think that it levels up, you know, their Instagram feed and their website, because it very clearly communicates who they are. I also think of um, there's a practice I uh, hometown vet, they're, um, they're more, I think they're in Illinois off the top of my head. Um, but hometown vet.com, they are a uh, husband and wife team that they did an amazing job of communicating that they are the hometown vet. They're this family practice. They show pictures of, um, you know, everybody that works there and it's got a very cozy feel. So kind of first and foremost, figuring out your story, how you can communicate it in words, how you can communicate it with your visuals, and then kind of figuring out like, you know, the, um, you know, the technical things like what colors are you going to use? What kinds of things do you want to represent you? I really challenge veterinary hospitals to get away from just like the standard paw print logo. Um, I'm a huge believer in having a logo that is something somebody would want to wear. Um, like I really think that having good um, iconography that people identify with is so important so that it is something that they will connect with on a deeper level than just, okay, cool paw print. Um, so figure out what you want your visuals to kind of communicate in terms of your actual logos and colors. Um, and that's something where, you know, if you work with whisker cloud, we have our designer alley that helps with everything there. Um, and from there on in, I think it really gets into handing it off to somebody who can kind of take the reins and make this all look really beautiful and cohesive for you. Um, whether that's whisker cloud or another company, but, um, you know, you want to definitely trust, trust a professional to make it all look good. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> that, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> So, um, I guess maybe one last question here as we, as we sure. wrap up, cause I, I know that a lot of people are thinking about personal branding, um, yeah. in general, which is cool, I think. So, um, if somebody is thinking like, Hey, I, I want to create content, um, or I want to create personal brands, not necessarily content, but they have something yeah. they're thinking about it. What kind of is your suggestion for them? I know that there's a lot of people sitting on yeah. the sidelines waiting for, you know, I'm not sure what they're waiting for, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are your kind of suggestions for personal branding as well? Yeah. So absolutely. I think that personal branding is such an exciting opportunity right now, especially as we are getting into a phase of veterinary medicine, um, a, a part of veterinary medicine's, um, you know, history where we're seeing such a shift toward a female dominated industry where we're graduating, you know, 80% women right now out of vet school, uh, AVMA is over 50% women. Um, we're really, really becoming a female dominated industry. And there's certain, you know, catches to that meaning, um, work-life balance is becoming more important. Um, so I think that, you know, for, you know, people in this space, there's such an opportunity to use a personal brand so that you don't need to be in a clinic 
80 hours a week to make a living. Okay. You, you know, you might be able to make YouTube videos and make a living off of that. I think there's so many creative ways that you can build, um, out a personal brand as a veterinarian or a veterinary professional right now and really monetize that and have some work-life balance. So that's kind of why I'm passionate about it. Um, in terms of, of doing it, my biggest thing is 100%, like you're saying, I don't know why they're waiting on the sidelines. A lot of people, um, it comes down to, frankly, imposter syndrome. People are like, I don't know why you would want to hear from me. And especially in a female-dominated industry where women are more likely to suffer from that doubt, um, and it is a very real thing. There are men in this industry right now that are saying imposter syndrome is not real, and it's because they just haven't had to experience it. Um, but women might be sitting there and being like, ah, gee whiz, I don't know if anybody wants to hear from me. Um, the biggest thing is people will want to hear from you if you tell an authentic story. Um, I think it's so important that if you do come out and you're trying to build this brand, that it is authentic and transparent and very you don't try to model what you're doing after somebody else. You know, when I was working, um, for, um, Dr. Andy Rourke, people would come to me and they're like, I want to be, you know, I want to be like the do next Dr. Andy Rourke. And it's like, there's only one Andy, you know, there's only one guy in South Carolina that thinks these dad jokes are funny and has that goofy sense of humor. Like he is, you know, he does his improv thing. Like he's a very unique individual. Let him have that. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't be, you know, you can't have just as many followers as him as, as yourself go be yourself. Um, so that is one of the biggest things. Cause I see a lot of people falling into these traps where they try to just copy what they see other successful brands doing. Um, but we already have an Andy Rourke. We already have a Marty Becker. We already have a Dr. Sue cancer vet and we already have a Dr. Cody Creelman. We don't need another one. They're special and they're out there. We need you to come out here and have your own voice and do something unique and special and just share it. And I think the more you do that, um, you can grow a brand so quickly. I have Dr. Lauren Smith that does the vetitude about having like the right attitude in veterinary medicine. She's come out and owned her own voice in the last couple of months and built a, like a following of a couple thousand people very quickly. But she's out here talking about her attitude and her experiences. And she's talking about her personal life. Um, she's just making everything very transparent and people are connecting with that. So be yourself and the right people will follow you. Um, just put it out there and they'll track you down. I love Instagram right now because it's so discoverable. You know, I think there's a huge opportunity to build out a following there. Um, but yeah, just, just get going, put it out there. Totally. I was going to say, I, see the vetitudes um live streams on instagram all the time oh yeah so no, she's, she's, she's doing such a great job that is and literally out of nowhere like i invited her to be in the squat she spoke at uncharted right so she was somebody who had contributed to the dr andy work site and uh dr vogel saying and i um had always kind of had our eye on her she spoke at uncharted and i was just so impressed with her and so I came to her and I was like, listen, I'd like you to be involved in the snout squad. And she's like, oh, I kind of want to do something talking about culture and, and, you know, being a little bit more positive. And then she like bursts out with this brand and like in a couple of months is really like, you know, I, you know how hard it is to grow this stuff. Like totally. she's doing a great job, but I think, you know, like she was talking about, she, um, is trying to get gastric bypass surgery. She's like been talking about that and being very open in public. And I think that's why that brand works. It's just like how, you know, Dr. Sue cancer vet talks about the patients that she loses sometimes like being transparent, I think is what people will connect with on a different level. Um, instead of, you know, all credit where credit is due for like the classic brands that we have, the classic veterinary personal brands in this, this space. But I think that right now the people, the voices that are going to come up and that are going to be the big brands in the future are those transparent brands. Um, there's a reason, you know, Dr. Cody Creelman has built out everything he does so much. He shares about his family. He shows, you know, all the blood and guts and there's maybe too much transparency. Um, <laughs> personally, as somebody, you're not a blood and guts person either. Like sometimes I have to say, I actually really like, like the abscess. Like, uh, uh, I don't know why I do. Oh I do. God, no. I'm like, Cody, I don't want to be your friend anymore. <laughs> when I see that stuff. But, but, it, but he shares so much of his life too, right? You see, you know, stuff about his kids and you see stuff about, you know, his wife giving him a hard time. Sometimes she cries. Me up. But like, it's very real. And I think that is the future of personal branding is just that transparency. Um, so a hundred percent, if you're kind of waiting around, um, 
you got to stop and think about what it is that makes you special. Stop trying to be somebody else and put it out there. Totally. So last thing, because I think that that is great advice, but that's yeah. like the scariest advice possible. It is. It is, right? <laughs> so like, what is your tip for actually taking that step and being like out there and transparent? Because yeah. I mean, that that's terrifying to say like, this is who I am because like, that sets you up for rejection and all kinds of things. Right. A hundred percent. Right. So that's actually what I think is scariest about this, right? Is if you do put yourself out there and it is your authentic self and if it's not well received, then that's absolutely terrifying. Um, if you're struggling with that, I think the biggest thing I would say is reach out to myself or the other members of the snout squad, because I think, you know, a big thing that we want to do is empower each other. So if you're struggling with that and you're like, I am terrified, reach out and kind of feel free to bounce ideas off of us. And if you're trying to launch something, if we can help promote you and support you, you know, sometimes it just helps to even have a couple friends in your corner just to kind of have a few cheerleaders going. Um, so know that we have that support system for you. Please, please, please reach out to me, reach out to the members of the snout squad. Um, if you look on the new snout school page, you can find all their, um, on snoutschoolcom slash squad. You can find all their contact info or we're very easy to find on, especially Instagram. So reach out. And if you're like, I'm going to put my first post up, like having 30 friends that say they'll go like your post will make you feel a lot more confident. Totally. <laughs> So you've got that. <laughs> That's good, good stuff. Well, I, re I really appreciate it. It's super valuable. Yeah. If people want to get in touch with you, um, um, what, what's the best way right now? Best way right now, find me on, you know, my Instagram is at Danielle Snout. We're at snout.school um, on Instagram uh, for Snout School. And if you want to get our Snout Squad starter kit, it is snoutschool.com slash start. And if you are in need of a beautiful uh, website redesign and logo rebrand, all that fun jazz, there's always a special deal going on for people who follow me at whiskercloud.com slash Danielle. So that should cover it. I'm pretty easy to find. Totally. Yeah. I can't, I can't say um, enough good stuff about, about you and uh, Whisker well, Cloud. So if you, <laughs> are, if you want a website and you are needing one, absolutely go check that out. I'd say if you haven't, what, what, real quick, what's your cutoff time for, if you haven't updated your site since what year <laughs> should they oh call you? You know what? I always joke. So Adam, our CEO, I joke that he can guess the age of a website, kind of how like a veterinarian can just by looking at it, just like how a veterinarian can look at like a pet's teeth and guess the age. Like I, I really think probably honestly, two, three years is probably the max on a website. And that's, I think something beautiful about Whisker Cloud is we include unlimited updates. And I think that's important because stuff can look dated really fast. Um, yeah, it's interesting and, how yeah, the trends go. Crazy. And it's like, it's yep. so fast. It oh, it's like a 70s house, except it exactly, was three years old. Exactly. Time for a remodel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Danielle. I really appreciate it. Um, Absolutely. And we'll have to have you on the podcast again. Maybe we can get both you and Adam on sometime. Yeah, that that'd be fun. Because <laughs> now you live in SoCal. So there we go. All yeah, right. Well, exactly. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Danielle.